one in five online job postings are either fake or never filled. And working with software engineers who are looking for new positions, I can tell you this is a reality that software developers looking for a job in 2025 and beyond have to face. Okay, there's a lot of fake postings, uh, jobs are posted even if they were already filled or the company just puts a job posting out there and then they pull it out because of budget cuts or whatever happens. Right? And the question is, how can software engineers deal with that? Because it involves a lot of wasted time and a lot of frustration. Bogdan, across your career, you've probably been applying to around 800, 900 jobs. What's your take on that? Uh, there's definitely a lot of fake jobs or there's definitely a lot of jobs, like as you mentioned, where they're not really wanting to hire. They just put an offer out there, but they're not really serious about it. They're just like going to interview a bunch of people and then hire no one three months later. Uh, there's many reasons why companies do this. Sometimes it's because they change a priority. Sometimes it's because they just want to test the market and see what they can get. So they want to see, you know, should we give some promotions or can we place our staff with someone uh, for a lower salary? That's why we, we know for a fact that most salary increases come not from promotions. It's extremely hard to get even a 5-10% increase, but from switching jobs. Because companies also use this kind of pressure to make sure that the people that have a job and are hired um, do not ask for more. right? Because they're scared, they won't find something. I think it's very true and I think it's even more true in today's market for developers. You're the one that's uh, working with a lot of our uh, mentees, kind of when they go and hit the market. What are the strategies that they typically use to, to work around this and make sure that they don't, they don't get just demotivated? So, uh, the first thing I would say is manage your expectations. So understand that you know, the job market is what it is. Companies do these things and you cannot really control it. The question is how can you work around it and how can you get through these fake job postings as efficiently as you can and move on with actually serious companies that are you know, putting serious things out there and are willing to hire you. Candidates are also guilty because when the ChatGPT launch, everybody jumped in and they write emails using ChatGPT, they write their CVs, they write their applications. So you have to understand, yes, companies are a bit mercenary on these things, but do not make the situation worse. And by the way, I've seen a study where 80% of hiring managers would describe you or rate you negatively as a candidate if they found that you used AI in your application, which doesn't mean you shouldn't use AI at all. But what it means is you should edit everything you are posting out there yourself. I mean, I, I see people who have like degrees and master degrees and PhDs. And I'm like, you, you can't write a freaking email yourself. You need ChatGPT for that. You need ChatGPT to write your CV. You've been four years studying uni. All right, so don't, don't use it yourself. Don't make the situation worse by using AI and saying, hey, I'm going to apply to a thousand jobs in 60 minutes like these people posting on LinkedIn. By the way, you can immediately tell if the CV is written with AI. We've, we got some of those and usually you get, you know, three paragraphs for something they could say in one or they use uh, vocabulary like spare-headed or kind of like nonsense, totally English nonsense. And then you feel like they don't respect your time and you just like discard the whole CV immediately because you're like, okay, this was generated. But yeah, back to you. Because they don't respect your time, right? You are giving human time, your time that you don't, you will never get back. Your time is very, the most finite thing. And you're reading that, that, resume and the candidate didn't even put the effort to, to, to write it, right? So it is an insult. That's why if people get this negative emotion, because it's true, they are wasting your time. Right? And number two, it says nothing about you as a candidate. It's just something ChatGPT wrote about you, but it's not you okay, in the end. Okay, so don't use it now. Let's see how can you, let's suppose you're not using AI, you've done your homework, you have a great developer CV, uh, you have a great LinkedIn profile. You don't waste your time like everybody does with uh, open source or with portfolios because they don't work. Right? And if you are doing this, stop doing it. Focus on your resume and focus on your LinkedIn. So let's say you have these things. How can you deal with fake postings? Well, you have to spend time on these platforms. You have to spend time on LinkedIn. You have to spend time on Indeed. And you have to do the applying yourself. That's why we say don't use AI. Because when you, when you see jobs and you keep seeing like 500 job postings as you search for jobs to apply, you will develop an eye. Hey, is this company actually serious or not? And that's when you start cherry picking, right? So try to spot these things and I don't waste your time on them, right? Don't send a CV. The second thing, it's a change in mindset. I see developers definitely have their own mindset because they believe that if you make an application and they get a message back for an interview, they think that's actually something, that's some kind of commitment. And I would say developers have to recalibrate number one, their expectations, and number two, recalibrate your commitment, okay? So unless a company is serious about inviting you to an interview and they are serious they, they actually dedicate human time to you right do not think 
you know, just because you, you have some people calling you up that you're going to end up getting a job in the next two to three months. Okay. And only commit to people that commit to you. So you, you scale your commitment as, as they scale theirs. Meaning if uh, you get a bunch of emails back, you apply to a job and you get a bunch of emails and they send you some, some take home task. Do not just right away jump on it. Ask some follow up questions. Make sure you're actually going to get back something for your time. Because this is where the frustration comes on the side of the developers. It's I'm putting so much time on the job search and they're passing me around. The jobs are fake. The recruiters are unprofessional. They're passing me around and I'm just wasting my time. What I was about to ask you is how do you stay motivated? I'm imagining someone that, you know, just got laid off. Maybe they're applying to 10, 20 jobs a day and then sometimes you get rejected. So how do you stay motivated when, when you hear something like this? I think people get demotivated because number one, they're making no progress. And number two, they're putting a lot on the line without getting much back. For example, you just got laid off and you have to go back to the market. You are a JavaScript developer. Let's say you did a bit of Python at your job. You did a bit of Java back in the days. The first mistake people do is they do not focus. Right? They, they, they try to run after five rabbits. They're like, hey, you know, JavaScript is very competitive right now. So I'm going to try to get a, get a Python job. Somebody talked to me about the Python job. And then they start, you know, putting so much energy into Python just to get rejected in the, in the technical interview because companies want a specialist. They want to get the best they can for their, for their buck. And let's be honest, if you've written Python like five years ago and you're a JavaScript dev, you are not the best investment for them. Okay, so number one is focus and stick to your guns. I know some people that go and write, you know, they do a take-home task, maybe in Python, if they're a JS developer, because they think oh, with GPT, it's so easy and, and they pass that. Do you think that's a good idea to like, if I'm a JavaScript developer, to go ahead and do like a Python take-home task and then try to squeeze myself into a Python interview, especially if I'm not getting interviews? No, I, I know these people and they never get an offer. Maybe they pass the first Tangle interview, but then there's going to be another Tangle interview. And a senior engineer, a senior Python engineer will want you to not only be able to get some stuff done on in Python, but they will want you to have an intimate knowledge of the platform. And especially if you want to find a job fast, right? If you have two months or three months money in the bank to find a job, do not try to learn something new. You're going to suck at it. You're going to be a junior dev in Python and you're going to be a mid-level dev in, in JavaScript. Stick to JavaScript. Those are your technical gaps. One thing you can do if you are a front-end dev and you see that the front-end dev market is very competitive, you can add some full sex skills. Now, you will not become a fully-fledged senior back-end engineer in three months. But you can get a, a feeling of the full stack and you can learn how to do things on the full stack. And if you couple that with, with your client side knowledge, that's very valuable. But the one thing you should do, if you don't want to burn out and if you don't want to, to get demotivated, it's number one, focus. Number two, it's don't watch the news. These people on YouTube are uh, telling you about how, you know, Zach, uh, Mark Zuckerberg is saying developers have no future and all that. There's a lot of negativity online now because of the algorithm and that's not helping you. So if you can shut that down and if you can just focus on your goal, which is getting a new position in the things you know, so let's suppose you're again, the JavaScript dev, getting a new, I know, front engineering position. That's it. That's the only thing I, I, I'm going to do about. Um, and I'm going to work on closing the gap on my interviewing skills and front end skills. And I'm going to work on applying to jobs and getting interviews. And then the one thing that I see lacking, all developers lack, it's number one, they don't know their numbers. Like they don't know, hey, how many, I, I've sent a hundred applications. How many people actually call me back? From the people that call me back, how many proceeded to a technical interview? And if you look at the numbers, they are very low. And what I always tell people is finding a job, it's a very linear process, okay? You apply with your CV and LinkedIn. You get, you get a recruiter is calling you. Maybe you get an HR interview. Maybe you get a hiring manager interview. Then if you pass those, you're going to be passed on to the technical interviews. Those can be one, two, or three, depending on the company. Usually it's at least two of them. Right? And it can be life coding and it can be take home challenge. It's a bit like a, like a pipeline. Yeah. And, and what I wanted to say that it's, there's always a bottleneck. There's always a main bottleneck. And now you talked about the, the resume, right? The resume can be a bottleneck. Then the, uh, your resume gets good, but you say some, some stupid answers in the, with the recruiter there and you don't get passed forward to a single interview, right? Then when, when most people get stuck after we fix the CV and we fix the interview performance, is the technical interview. And that's what developers have to understand. Like your CV has to be good for you to get as many technical interviews as you can. That's the game of getting a new job. It's get as many technical interviews as you can. And it has to be the same technical interview, meaning it has to, if you're a JavaScript developer, you want to have those JavaScript technical interviews all over and over because that's when you're actually going to get good. When you do the same interview over and over and over, right? To repetition in part, that's one way to get good. But going back to, to what you said, you apply and you don't get any interviews. That's definitely the, the CV. And I mean, we have a, a full article on the blog and I can make a video about it. 
but it's either that you don't have enough experience or if you have experience, you're not communicating it properly. And the biggest mistake here is that people think that their resume, developers think their resume is kind of a git commit, like a commit history of everything they've done. And they fail to understand that, you know, it's actually the opposite. It's from all the, you know, all the stuff you've been doing, all the experience you had, it's cherry picking the one that's relevant and shaping it into a software engineering CV that's relevant to a JavaScript position. I've seen a lot of people on YouTube saying when, when they face this kind of market, the advice that I've seen right now in 2025, it's either, um, oh, you should network and just meet people personally or go and put your resume in place or go to meetups. And I also seen, uh, and this is what I want to ask you, like doing open source, get involved in projects. So don't be just another application in the, in the pile of CVs. Mm -hmm. Do you think that would help? The fastest way for you to get a software engineering job is to have an amazing CV and to be good at interviewing. Build a lot of value in your resume and you don't do that by doing open source and GitHub. And I, I just had a chat a few days ago with a developer telling me, oh, I'm working on my portfolio and I'm working on my, uh, trying to work on my GitHub. And I ask them a simple question. You know, you have this hiring manager, right? This engineering manager, because HR cannot evaluate your, your skills as a software engineer, right? So they are the ones getting the CV in the end. If you think about this person, they have eight hours in the day. They have to manage a team. They have to manage the stakeholders. They have to get everything done. And then they have to sit down and read your amazing GitHub, GitHub profile and your, your resume, right? They probably are not going to look at your GitHub, no matter what people say. Okay. Most HR professionals in tech, most engineering managers, don't check your GitHub. Number one, because they don't have the time. Number two, imagine you have some code there, but code without an explanation. I mean, they won't understand anything. Okay. So that won't work. For sure, it doesn't work. And I invite you to try it and ask how many people actually check your GitHub profile. Answer, not many. It might happen. Right? There, is, there is one developer in a thousand that gets hired because of open source contributions. Now, the question is, can this be applied to the average dev that wants a job? And the answer is no. Regarding open source, most open source developers are broke. Okay, uh, Some of them are out of jobs. Some of them struggle to get jobs, but they use this open source thing. It's a kind of an elitistic, elit elitistic thinking. And I wouldn't even pay attention to it. It doesn't work. Like ask how many people got hired because of open source. Again, one in a thousand doesn't mean you should do open source. And what about, I've also seen a lot of advice about either writing blog posts, creating content, building your personal brand or doing YouTube videos. I saw a lot of people saying, oh, you should, you know, whatever side project you're building, you should write a blog post about it and share your knowledge. And what's, what's your take on that? Should developers write blog posts and, and do YouTube content to, to get a job? Would that help? No. And again, I think it's, you know, these people say these things and because developers are kind of stuck, I mean, everything is as good as nothing, right? So why, uh, let me, maybe I haven't wrote a blog post. Maybe I should do that. And, and I believe really, I think it's, it's getting distracted and it's failing to understand the basic principles from first principles. What is this about? It's about getting in front of companies and showing them that you can do the job. And the job is not writing blog posts. Why do companies hire a software engineer? Because they want them to solve problems through code. Okay. They want them to get a requirement refine it with the product manager, and they want to ship that to production. Those are the only skills you should be working on. Okay. And there's so many people in the market, a company doesn't have to go to your blog post and hire you. Like they are not that desperate to search online and see who, which developer has a blog post. It will take years for your blog to pick up to a level where it can actually help you build your brand. So when you hear these things about do this, do that, no, you need to get back to the fundamentals and the fundamentals is companies hire software engineers to solve technical problems, to code. My last question for you, Josh, it's like, what about this open to work? I see a lot of people, they get laid off and the next day you see their LinkedIn and they say, I'm open to work. If anybody knows anyone, uh, please, you know, refer them my way. Do you think that's a good idea? Like if I get laid off tomorrow to put that on LinkedIn and to set open to work in my profile? I mean, for recruiters, yes, not for everybody. And uh, it gets close to, you know, to begging. And I'm not, I understand people. They think that will give them traction and, and LinkedIn added that. But the problem there is signaling. You are signaling to the market that number one, you are kind of desperate. Number two, you, do, you don't have a backup, backup plan. Nobody likes needy people, needy, desperate people. Nobody wants to associate with them. So even if you're in a, you know, you're in a weak position there because you, you need a job, you, you need people to hire you, you should act like, like you'd be in a powerful position. Meaning that think about a very senior dev or they, they've been at this company and they quit because they don't like it anymore, they probably have five other companies wanting to hire them, right? People that they worked with in the past, people that know they are very good, right? So the problem with putting this online and showcasing this to the world, it's you are sending the wrong signal. You are sending the signal, no, I don't have that network. 
I don't have that confidence in myself and I'm just desperate here asking for a job. Okay. And people do these things and they do these videos, these TikTok videos or stuff looking for a job. I do this and that will get your attention, but it will not get your job. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you want to, to project this image of a high value professional, of a high value software engineer. A high value software engineer doesn't, you know, openly uh, ask people online, hey, just please recommend me. That's, that's pure desperation. Okay, I understand where it comes from. I don't think it's the best. I would not do it myself. I don't think it's the best strategy. I would open my profile for recruiters only because then you're going to pop up in the searches. And then even there say, hey, you know, my last company, we decided to, to end things. And then I, I took a bit of a break and now I'm back to the market. That's kind of the attitude you want to project. Yeah, so never never show neediness. Okay, so to, to wrap it up, um, given that one in five job postings are fake, we want to use them, like we want to, first of all, then panic and be focused. More, number two, use numbers. Number three, then go ahead and just create content or write blogs. Number four, don't advertise the fact that you're unemployed on LinkedIn. It's not going to help you. It's gonna, actually going to work against you. Yeah, folks. And if you if you are wondering how exactly to build that CV, that that resume or what are my technical gaps, check out the, the Senior Dev website. We have a free technical assessment there for you to find out your gaps. And we have plenty of videos on this channel about how to navigate the technical interview and how to build a good quality resume that breaks through the noise. With that being said, thank you so much, and see you, folks, in the next one.